everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa if you are new here. The 2020 presidential elections are just right around the corner and there are a lot of hot topics that are coming up because of these elections. So I just wanted to touch upon some of these topics in this video and in future videos. This video and any videos that have to do with the election are in no way trying to sway you in any which way. I'm not going to try to tell you who you should vote for or what you should think. I'm just here to inform you all on topics and look at the election with a Catholic perspective. Oftentimes, when we think about our faith and we think about politics and the way we vote, we often think they need to be separated. We hear a separation of church and state, and oftentimes we lead with that, and we don't bring our faith into the way we vote. But in a previous video, I talked about why our faith plays an important role in how we vote, and I'll have that video linked down below if you want to know more about that. In this particular video, we are going to be discussing the topic of abortion and seeing what the Catholic Church teaches on abortion and whether or not we can vote for a policy or a candidate candidate that advocates for the right to abortion. So the first place that we look at when we're looking at what the Catholic Church teaches is the Ten Commandments, specifically the Fifth Commandment. The Fifth Commandment states, Thou shall not kill. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church outlines this perfectly. So what does the Catholic Church say about the Fifth Commandment? Well, a good place to look at when we're looking at what does the Catholic Church teach is to go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The Catechism of the Catholic Church talks about the Fifth Commandment in paragraphs 2258 through 2330. In a previous video, we talked about the Fifth Commandment briefly. We touched upon it in the topic of firearms. So if you're interested in that topic, I'll also have that video linked down below. So a good place to start is paragraph 2258 where we learn about how human life is sacred. It says, Human life is sacred because from its beginning it involves the creative action of God and it remains forever in a special relationship with the Creator, who is its sole end. God alone is the Lord of life from its beginning until its end. No one can come under any circumstance claim for himself the right directly to destroy an innocent human being. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2261, talks about the murdering of an innocent life. It says, Scripture specifies the prohibition contained in the Fifth Commandment. Do not slay the innocent and the righteous. The deliberate murder of an innocent person is gravely contrary to the dignity of the human being, to the golden rule, and to the holiness of the Creator. The law forbidding it is universally valid. It obliges each and everyone, always and everywhere. And now we're going to move on to paragraphs 2268 through 2269. Now these paragraphs talk about homicide. And I find these paragraphs to be very, very important. Oftentimes when we talk about abortion, people go to the abortion section of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. These paragraphs are not directly talking about abortion, but these two paragraphs right here are so important in the abortion conversation. Let's see what they have to say. The fifth commandment forbids direct and intentional killing as gravely sinful. The murderer and those who cooperate voluntarily in murder commit a sin that cries out to heaven for vengeance. Infanticide, fratricide, parricide, and the murder of a spouse are especially grave crimes by reason of the natural bonds which they break. Concern for eugenics or public health cannot justify any murder, even if commanded by a public authority. In this paragraph, we learn that we are forbidden from committing direct and an intentional killing. Now, this is not talking about self-defense. Like I said, we talked about that in a past video, which I'll have linked down below. So if you want to know more about that, check out that video. Notice how the Catholic Church notes infanticide. And for those of you who do not know this, this is the killing of a child soon after birth. The Catholic Church also takes note of the direct and intentional killing when it comes to eugenics or public health. And and so this is often referring to people who see others as unfit, so they want to get rid of them. And we have seen this done in different countries, in different times of the world, in genocides, in the Holocaust, and we see this today in the topic of abortion. Now paragraph 2269 talks about indirect killing. Let's see what it has to say. The fifth commandment forbids doing anything with the intention of indirectly bringing about a person's death. The moral law prohibits exposing someone to mortal danger without grave reason, as well as refusing assistance to a person in danger. The acceptance by human society of murderous famines 
without efforts to remedy them is a scandalous injustice and a grave offense. Those whose usurious and avaricious dealings lead to the hunger and death of their brethren and the human family indirectly commit homicide, which is imputable to them. Unintentional killing is not morally imputable, but one is not exonerated from grave offense if, without proportionate reasons, he has acted in a way that brings about someone's death, even without the intention to do so. Now, I would like to reread the second sentence of this paragraph again. The moral law prohibits exposing someone to mortal danger without grave reason, as well as refusing assistance to a person in danger. Now, I would like to look at these paragraphs with the conversation of abortion in mind. Now, when we look at what these paragraphs are teaching when we're talking about abortion, we see that as Catholics, since we are against abortion, which we're going to touch upon later on in this video, we cannot just stand by and not provide help to the innocent lives that are being taken. We must take our means and help them in which way that we can. Now, a lot of us can't go out on the streets and protest because we have jobs, we have families, we have children we have to feed, we have our own struggles we need to take care of, but we have other ways that we can play a role in standing up for the right to life, such as in the way that we vote. And so we as Catholics, according to this teaching, cannot sit by and allow for innocent lives to be taken. And if we do allow for these innocent lives to be taken and do nothing and say, oh, it doesn't involve me, then we fall guilty in this indirect killing. Now, if these paragraphs weren't clear enough that we're supposed to stand up for the right to life and vote for the right to life, let us see what the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches about abortion because it outlines it perfectly. Now, the following paragraphs that I'm going to be reading, I'm not going to interject in between paragraphs because the Catholic Church outlines this very, very clear. However, on the slides, I will be bolding parts that I think are very important for us to take note of, though all of these teachings are very, very important for us to take note of. But like I said, I'm not going to be interjecting. Human life must be respected and protected protected absolutely from the moment of conception. From the first moment of his existence, a human being must be recognized as having the rights of a person, among which is the inviolable right of every innocent being to life. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Since the first century, the church has affirmed the moral evil of every procured abortion. This teaching has not changed and remains unchangeable. Direct abortion, that is to say, abortion willed either as an end or a means, is gravely contrary to the moral law. You shall not kill the embryo by abortion and shall not cause the newborn to perish. God, the Lord of life, has entrusted to men the noble mission of safeguarding life, and men must carry it out in a manner worthy of themselves. Life must be protected with the utmost care from the moment of conception. Abortion and infanticide are abominable crimes. Formal cooperation in an abortion constitutes a grave offense. The church attaches the canonical penalty of excommunication to this crime against human life. A person who procures a completed abortion incurs excommunication, late sententiae, by the very commission of the offense, and subject to the conditions provided by canon law. The church does not thereby intend to restrict the scope of mercy. Rather, she makes clear the gravity of the crime committed, the irreparable harm done to the innocent who is put to death, as well as to the parents and the whole of society. The inalienable right to life of every innocent human individual is a constitutive element of a civil society and its legislation. The inalienable rights of the person must be recognized and respected by civil society and the political authority. These human rights depend neither on single individuals nor on parents, nor do they represent a concession made by society and the state. They belong to human nature and are inerrant in the person by virtue of the creative act from which the person took his origin. Among such fundamental rights, one should mention in this regard every human being's right to life and physical integrity from the moment of conception until death. 
The moment a positive law deprives a category of human beings of the protection which civil legislation ought to accord them, the state is denying the equality of all before the law. When the state does not place its power at the service of the rights of each citizen, and in particular, of the more vulnerable, the very foundations of the state based on law are undermined. As a consequence of the respect and protection which must be ensured for the unborn child from the moment of conception, the law must provide appropriate penal sanctions for every deliberate violation of the child's rights. Since it must be treated from conception as a person, the embryo must be defended in its integrity, cared for it and healed as far as possible, like any other human being. Prenatal diagnosis is morally licit. If it respects the life and integrity of the embryo and the human fetus and is directed towards its safeguarding or healing as an individual, it is gravely opposed to the moral law when this is done with the thought of possibly inducing an abortion. Depending upon the results, a diagnosis must not be the equivalent of a death sentence. One must hold as licit procedures carried out on the human embryo, which respect the life and integrity of the embryo, and do not involve disproportionate risks for it, but are directed toward its healing, the improvement of its condition of health, or its individual survival. It is immoral to produce human embryos intended for exploitation as disposable biological material. Certain attempts to influence chromozoic or genetic inheritance are not therapeutic, but are aimed at producing human beings selected according to sex or other predetermined qualities. Such manipulations are contrary to the personal dignity of the human being and his integrity and identity, which are unique and unrepeatable. So, from these paragraphs, we can clearly see that the Catholic Church clearly outlines that a Catholic cannot support abortion, and it is not enough for a Catholic to say, oh, I'm pro-life in my own life, but I'm pro-choice when I vote. You as Catholics cannot vote like that. You must stand up for the right to life for everyone, not just in your own family, but for everyone's family. And when we vote against pro-life policies or pro-life candidates, we are voting pro-abortion. So from all of this, we can see that we cannot be pro-abortion as a Catholic. We cannot be pro-abortion in our own lives as a Catholic. We cannot be pro-abortion in other people's lives as a Catholic. We have outlined duties and things that we represent as Catholics and things that we uphold as Catholics, aka the Ten Commandments that we are supposed to do as Catholics. And when we vote against pro-life policies or pro-life candidates and we're voting for a pro-abortion candidate, someone who doesn't stand up for the right to life, we are going contrary to what the church teaches us to do, what God teaches us to do. As Catholics, we're supposed to uphold the right to life in our daily lives, in our personal home lives, and how we vote. So guys, I hope that you learned something new from this video and it's given you something to consider. Now, I know that this video is going to be demonetized. YouTube is not going to be happy to see it. They were not happy about my other abortion videos, so I know they're not going to be happy to see this video. So truly, I am making this video because I really want to inform you. Now, your say in this election, the United States citizens who are voting in this 2020 election, your say is very, very important. Now, I live in a liberal state, so I know that even though I'm going to vote conservative and vote for the right to life, I know my vote's not going to count. But it's very important that I do what I can to stand up for the right to life, whether that be praying my rosary outside an abortion clinic or vote for someone who is going to defund Planned Parenthood. I, as a Catholic, have a duty to stand up for the right to life to protect other people's lives, innocent lives, and I'm going to do what I can to do that. So I'm taking this opportunity and this platform that I have on YouTube to come out here and inform you guys. So I know that this may bother some people because I know a lot of people don't really like the fact that they found out that I'm conservative and I vote that way, but I honestly don't care. So. If this upsets you in any way and you don't want to see me anymore, feel free to unsubscribe, but I also encourage you to reconsider your position and reconsider 
how much you follow the church because if you're voting for a candidate that does not uphold the right to life, that believes that life doesn't begin at conception and that it's a woman's right to murder her child, then I don't know if you're really following what the church is teaching. And that may be hard to understand and I'm fine if you don't, but I really encourage you to spend some time with God and pray and hopefully he'll be in clarity on this topic if you're still fuzzy about it. But if you do like me, please hit the subscribe button because I really would enjoy for you guys to continue watching my videos. And if you don't agree with me, please hit the subscribe button too so you can let me know why in my future videos. Let me know whether or not you agree with me on this topic or agree with my stance or agree with the church teaches. Let us know in the comment bar down below. If this video made you happy, let me know. If this video made you very upset with me, let me know. I'd love to hear from you, all of you. And I really appreciate all the support you guys provide me. And I love you all. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.